Joining me now is Foreign Policy Editor-in-Chief uh, Ravi Agrawal. Uh, Ravi, thanks for joining us on this. Talk to me about the timing of the testing of this short-range ballistic missile by North Korea uh, with the arrival of this U.S. military ship and, of course, the arrival of uh, the Vice President of the United States in just a couple of days. Yeah, so as you say, I mean, the timing is both significant but also not. It's significant because, as you say, Vice President Kamala Harris will be in the region. Um, you know, Japan has a new prime minister. Of course, everyone will be assembling for the state funeral of former prime minister uh, uh, of Japan, Shinzo Abe. Uh, so there's a lot of attention in the region. And you'd imagine that North Korea's Kim wants to say, hey, what about me? But also, we shouldn't read too much into this. This mm. is, at least by, you know, one count, the 19th such test right. by North Korea this year alone. Um, you know, this is something that is quite familiar in terms of a pattern of what North Korea has been doing uh, over the last couple of years now. Uh, so taken in that context, it really is a call for attention. Yeah, yeah it seems like attention seeking policy um, from North Korea per usual. I um, also want to talk Russia here, obviously, and some of the threats um, that have been made by Russian President Vladimir Putin. First, though, I want to play for you um, some sound from uh, National Security uh, Advisor Jake Sullivan. Um, who was on with my colleague uh, Chuck Todd earlier today. Let's take a listen, and then we'll talk after. If he's publicly threatening nuclear weapons, why not send a public message, which I'm sure the people in, in Europe and, and Ukraine would like to hear, that says, you cross this line, uh, Katie, bar the door, Mr. Putin. If Russia crosses this line, there will be catastrophic consequences for Russia. The United States will respond decisively. Now, in private channels, we have spelled out in greater detail exactly what that would mean. But we want to be able to have the credibility of speaking directly to senior leadership in Russia and laying out for them what the consequences would be without getting into mm -hmm. a rhetorical tit for tat publicly. And by the way, it's not lost, I think, on anybody that this is exactly what Vladimir Putin wanted. He wanted the world to be talking about his veiled threats, right, that he said, I'm not bluffing um, as you thought I was last time. What do you make of uh, what Sullivan had to say? Well, you know, I mean, it's a tightrope walk because on the one hand, you want to say there will be severe consequences if Russia does use, say, for example, a tactical nuclear device. But on the other hand, America is also under significant pressure to say it's not leaving too many things on the table. After all, you know, Russia is at war with Ukraine, even though it doesn't call it that. Um, and the war atrocities are horrific. And, and there's a lot of pressure for Washington to do more, not less. So it, it's it's a difficult sort of tight, tight rope walk for, for Jake Sullivan to walk there. But signaling, of course, that a you know nuclear escalation um, would be something that America would take very, very seriously. Um, privately, yes, indeed, there have been things discussed that um, they could roll out that would hurt Russia still further. But I think what is very significant here as well is what other countries may do. Um, over the last couple of weeks now, we've begun to see signs that China and India, for example, um, have been pressuring Putin behind the scenes to stop this war. Uh, mm. That kind of pressure, of course, uh, would would escalate dramatically um, were Putin to go down that route. But he needs this bluff for now. As we've seen over the last week by, you know, trying to call up 300,000 more reservists, um, Putin is betraying signs of desperation. I think this is one more of those. Ravi Agrawal, uh, thank you so much. We appreciate it. Good to talk to you.